Hi, my name is Hannah Jane Pritchett, current UA GISD master's student and UA GISD podcast co-host, along with Chris Lucanbeal. Welcome to the University of Arizona GISD podcast. Today, we will be chatting with MS GISD alum Naveed Ahmed, who is a GIS application developer in planning, design, and construction at the U of A. Hi, I'm Chris Lucanbeal. I'm the director of the UA GIST programs. And on today's podcast, we're excited to have Naveed Amdin with us, who is with Planning, Design, and Construction at the University of Arizona, as well as an alumni from the MS GIST program from 2015. And for my co-host today, we have Hannah Jane Pritchett, a current student in the MS GIST program. Hi, Hannah Jane. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. I'm very excited. Um, So let's just jump right in. So I was wondering, uh, Naveed, if you could speak about your GIS training and background a little bit. Yeah, for sure. First of all, thanks for having me. Uh, So I have an undergrad degree in Pakistan. They call it graduation, but in the United States, it's considered an undergrad degree in computer sciences. And after that, I have done two years of work in a private company over there that was doing uh, software application development. And there I met a colleague of mine who introduced me to Google Earth and it really fascinated me. And I have done a little more research about that and it it was pretty amazing. And then uh, there was an institution in, in the city where I was working that was doing graduation in GIS and remote sensing. And I got an admission over there and I got a degree in GIS remote sensing in 2009. So then I took a job in as a GIS analyst in a university of over there. Uh, it was kind of static work. There was, there is, there was no, uh, so there was no opportunity of growth over there. So I switched my job and there was, uh, I have done a work that was uh, related to the software development. And I spent like six years at the job and I was always wanting to move to the GIS field. And I researched universities online and uh, in the Google search, the first university that came up for the graduation for you was University of Arizona. So I was get in touch with the director of the institution that was Chris, and I took an admission and that's how I ended up here. Well, and we've been thankful to have you ever since as a wonderful colleague in the GIST community. Um, And I forgot to mention also one of our um, professors for the BS GIST program. You help, um, you teach the open source class regularly. And I'm grateful that you stayed on with that as well, too. Yeah, it's, it's just always exciting to be a part of uh, GIS, MSGIS, BSGIST faculty. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 it always inspires me to uh, communicate my knowledge to the students. Well, the one thing I, I wanted to ask you about or just tell the audience about was I think that you're a wonderful success story for the GIST programs and the University of Arizona in general that your tenacity to get to the United States to stick it out go through the program um, and then have a wonderful successful career and and family I mean and we're so thankful that you stayed with the university um, because you have lots of opportunities Um, we've done really well with, I like to tell people, 100% placement with international students like yourself. Um, But that's a very different journey for a graduate student to come from an international location, learn a new culture, as well as get relocated and do a whole degree at the same time. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about, you know, your, your experience as an international student, sort of that transition and how um, U of A um, helped out, but maybe also some of the difficulties you had to overcome. Uh, I cannot see I face any kind of difficulty over here. I feel myself extremely lucky uh, the day since I moved to the U.S. I, 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 I got surrounded 
in great people. So everybody was willing to help and they, they welcomed me like I was a part of the community yeah. society from the beginning. So I didn't feel myself as a stranger even a single day. And it, 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 it was a very uh, easy and welcome transition for me. Well, that's great. You um, really did well in your uh, graduate studies here and got involved with the GIS community. Um, in terms of, and you had done so previously when you're in Pakistan, in terms of networking and getting involved with the professional community, how has that enhanced your career? It helps me a lot. In back in Pakistan, there is not much scope in GIS. The people over over there, they mainly focus on the application development, uh, but in terms of GIS, Pakistan is far behind. But over here, GIS community is very dynamic. They are very active. There are, there are forums over here on different levels. Uh, they organize trainings, seminars. Uh, they organize workshops. They help us to do networking and uh, increase our knowledge and skills uh, in GIS field. It, it helps a lot, it, it, yeah, in every aspect to grow and flourish in your career. So I was curious, um, how do you think uh, your education in GIS helped you prepare for your current position? So when I have done my first degree in GIS and remote sensing, uh, it, it started in 2007 and it ended in 2009. It was. Uh, it was like a long time ago and since then a lot has been changed technologies are evolved there are uh, new tools uh, and technologies are in place so and i was not really in great touch of all these during the time uh, the six years uh, that i was doing uh, so that i spent uh, completely on the software development work and there was a little gas involved so when once I move here and I got admission in MSGIS program, uh, it gave me a great opportunity to upgrade my knowledge and update and keep myself updated with the new skills. Uh, like uh, I have learned Python, ArcGIS JavaScript API, uh, how we can use ArcGIS online. I uh, revised my concepts about uh, server ArcGIS server administrations. And all these skills, they are helping me out in my current job. When you were in the um, MS GIST program, you also took advantage of it being a night program by you know, enhancing your resume and sort of building, applying your skills. Um, maybe you could tell a little bit about what you did with the Arizona Geological Society um, because the work you did there was really neat and, and um, contributed greatly to their, you know, their, their goals. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, that's, that is another big advantage uh, I experienced working at MSGIS program. Like uh, they always, uh, they are always welcome and they always help us to get up, uh, to get internships in the industry, which is, I would consider a very key and major step to land in the in a good job later on, uh, yeah. So at uh, Arizona AZGAS, uh, AZGS, uh, it was a great experience. I worked on a project about mapping of uh, uh, about map mapping of different geological locations overall the United States, and uh, it was an open source project, and it also helped me a lot uh, and gained me a real industry experience. Uh, that helped me in the future to land in a great, great position later on. So what kind of work did you do with them? I mean, it was uh, um, specifically, it was related to mines, wasn't it? Um, uh, and an open source it was, website? It, yeah, it was related to hot springs. And uh, I was required to uh, build an application that goes through the different data sources and it crawls, uh, it, it, uh, it fetches the data from those different locations. And then this, this 
uh, save the data in the form of geographic features in the database. And later on, I build an application to map those hundreds and thousands of features uh, in a web mapping application. And that was an interactive web mapping application. That was a great project. Did that project, were you able to like use that as one of your uh, show and tells when you hit the job market at the end of your degree? Yeah, definitely. That counted a lot. That counted a lot. Uh, so uh, when I was applying for the job, uh, uh, I was able to show the project and uh, the worth and dynamics of that project. Uh, and it really... Uh, expresses my skills like I can how, how can I do programming programming uh, problem solving and how can I build a web mapping application and display the data from uh, from different kind of data sources on the web mapping application although that that was an open source based project uh, like the database was open source and the server I will use open server to host the data over there uh, but the concepts remains the same, uh, like the programming logic, it doesn't change when you move from open source technologies to license software. Mm. So I was curious, you were talking about um, skills uh, through the program and how that kind of helped um, up, like it helped you update the tools that you needed to work in your current job. How do you stay current in those GIS tools today? So ArcGIS Online, it has been evolved since 2015. Like there are different tools that are included with ArcGIS Online, uh, like Survey123 and Dashboards. They are new tools, but the platform is same, which is ArcGIS Online. Uh, that time uh, ArcGIS Online was based upon JavaScript API 3X, and now it is using 4X. But the concept and technologies, uh, they they are same, um, but the framework is different. So we can say that uh, what I have learned over there, it is uh, I can still apply that uh, knowledge in my current work. So when you were in the MS program and you had previous background, well, two degrees, computer science and GIS, um, two other masters. So you were a little unusual in that regard, but I, I like to point out that even with having that background, you still found ways to enhance your skills. And I was just kind of curious on, in terms of the MS program at U of A, what, what courses or modules did you find the, you know, um, insightful then that you still, you know, build on now in your career, that things that you found important that are still applicable to your career? So although over here at UFA, my work is like related to JS application development, but uh, sometimes I also need to use uh, desktop software like uh, Pro, ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS ArcMap. Uh, and so I, I, I almost forgot those uh, during my six years uh, time span. Uh, before my first degree and hands-on exercises that we have done in our course in GIS introduction. Uh, they were really helpful to go through uh, and get my knowledge revised about ArcMap. And after that, we learned uh, ArcGIS JavaScript API, Python. So they, these are two main technologies that, are, that I'm using right now in my work. So I, I feel them like really helpful for me. That's so great. I was wondering, what do you think the biggest factor that has helped you succeed in your GIS career like this far? So I personally feel a combination of computer sciences and GIS is the biggest factor that helped me flourish in my career. Uh, there are very few GIS people who can do coding and all programmer, programmers, they, 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 have, like, they don't have concepts about GIS. So that was the unique part in my, in my career that helped me succeed. And uh, it, it is all about that where I'm standing right now. So in terms of your career development, we talked about some skills, but I mean, you have an amazing skill set, um, but you put yourself out there too. I mean, you, 
got out in the community um, and participated in a lot of events um, during your graduate and postgraduate years. Um, what did those, how did those events and, you, you know, those speaking engagements that I, I asked you to do kindly um, and others, um, you know, what did those give back to you other than maybe heartburn? So I would strongly encourage everyone, uh, either they are in MS program or BS program, that they participate in those uh, meetups. Like GeoDev Meetup is, is a great forum. And uh, AJIC, uh, AJIC Conference is also a great forum to express yourself, to, uh, to go through and tell your work about the community over there. Uh, you can find, uh, you, you can build up community, you can, you can convey your work and probably you could get a job through those forums. And uh, it also builds a confidence uh, when we present something over there. And it's, it, I would also say that it's a good prep for your uh, final presentation as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so still you have some time before your final presentation so you can improve yourself uh, by expressing your work on those forums and you can overcome your shortcomings. And if you have done something amazing, then someone might hire you. What is the best advice that you could give someone wanting to start a career in GIS? So if someone wants to start their career in GIS, uh, do your homework. Uh, like, first of all, uh, filter out your interest, what admires you. So do the work that you like. Uh, if you really like the GIS, then uh, you should have a degree in GIS. Either are you a, if, if you are a junior, then you can do a BS, or if you are a graduate, uh, if you are undergraduate, then you can do an MS. And after your master's or during your degree, I would strongly encourage to do internships. And internships, they help a lot. And uh, be careful when you are choosing your final project uh, because this is the work that uh, might help you land in a job. Yeah, and we, we learn a lot during internships and uh, projects. So these are the basic things I, I would suggest someone if uh, they want to do GIS programming or any kind of work related to GIS. That was great, thank you. And what what's what's the best advice that um, has ever been given to you um, as going through your GIS career, maybe? So I got those two advices from my from my seniors and uh, from the peers uh, whom I was close to that time that do an, find and do an internship in GIS. So that, that, that will be a forum where you are going to learn a lot. And that exactly happened to me, like uh, internship as, uh, at AZGIS. AZGS has helped me a lot. Uh, I got my master's pro project over there, so it was beneficial for me in all aspects. So I was also wondering if you could talk about some uh, current projects that you have going on that you might be able to talk about with us. At Planning, Design, and Construction PDC, I'm, I'm really thankful to those folks. Uh, like they are always very helpful to me and they are providing me platform to build up my skills. Like they send me all the, GA, all the GAS programming conferences uh, that, are, that happen across the country. And we are doing some amazing and great projects at, uh, at PDC. So one of the uh, projects that we recently completed is uh, for parking and transportation department. We built a web mapping application for them uh, that helps uh, the visitors to find uh, the parking that is most relevant to them. And it also helps uh, other folks like students, staff and faculty to find the parking and to get acquainted uh, with the different parking places that are spread across the campus. Uh, and there is also an editing end of the application that is only being used by uh, the parking and transportation folks. They can manage and update the data to the application and very next day to the Python scripts when the data get uploads uh, on our uh, file to databases, the users, they can see the data, updated data. So it is very exciting project. On the parking application, I noticed now that, um... Are they, tr 
they no long they've completely changed their systems even at the parking structures where they're with the IDs and not having booths at a lot of them now, um, being able to monitor how many cars are in in each in in you know in each building. As yeah, in parking garage. Yeah, they 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 are trying to upgrade their system, and uh, it's not available in our application right now. But it is it is uh, one year one it is one thing in our to do list to. Uh, provide the real-time data that how much uh, capacity a parking garage has right now. So for me, I, I, I can give a little story of when I started here at the University of Arizona, I remember the original web map for U of A at the time was pretty basic. It looked like Google Maps with a couple dots and, and overlay points on it. and now, today, if you go to maps.arizona.edu, you find all kinds of different projects that have uh, Navid in the back end of all over. And it's been amazing to see what uh, planning, design, and construction the GIS team is, is doing for um, the campus. I thought maybe more generally, Navid, maybe you could tell us, like, what is it? mean to be a GIS person in planning, design, and construction on campus? What do you do in your, you know, like what does that team do? And then what do you do day to day kind of a thing? So at planning, design, and construction, one of our goals is to keep the data updated on the map and to help different departments, almost whoever needs the help related to mapping, we help them out like uh, there are almost diverse kind of users uh, using our web mapping application uh, ua police is one of them uh, infrastructure we are managing infrastructure uh, and uh, parking and transportation ua visitors so all those different stakeholders we are in contact with them and we try to fulfill their mapping needs and we have like different mapping applications. Uh, we so we have a team of GIS analysts who uh, prepare and build the data, and we make that data available on the web maps. So, what kind of daily tasks? As like, if somebody was like, "Gee, what what does Naveed do for his daily job?" Like, I think a lot of times students can like, I really enjoy GIS, but they don't know what people do day to day. I mean, what, do you, what kind of daily tasks do you get put on? Do you get one project and they just leave you alone and say, okay, we'll check in with him in December and see what he looks like? Or So it's not like that. Exactly, it's not like that. So we have uh, a different uh, set of projects. Like at a time, we are not working on one single project. Like uh, right now, we are also working on upgrading our public map. So there are... Uh, when the public map was developed, it was like uh, in 2013, uh, the technologies were not updated. Uh, the framework we were, we were using was not that advanced at, as it is available right now. So I am using a reactive uh, Vue.js framework and I'm using TypeScript, which is being used by Esri uh, to redevelop that application. And there are other like, Updates are, uh, I would say, suggestions from the stakeholders in the different applications that come up, and I try to incorporate that suggestions in our web mapping applications. We also have a, like a diverse kind of Python scripts that are running in the background. Those scripts, they uh, update uh, data from care drawings and make them available on uh, interactive floor plans. Mm -hmm. And I, we also try to manage and upgrade those frameworks as well. And uh, there are like Python scripts that are running on the nightly basis that update the Python data from enterprise view database to file view database. So I manage that scripts as well. So they keep me busy all the time. So at a time I'm working on different web mapping applications. Like there are issues that rise up and there are new web mapping applications that I need to develop and I, I perform those duties. And uh, so there is another cool uh, 3D application on which we are like working 
and it's in our to-do task. Could you talk a little bit more about that 3D campus map? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to send that link in the chat box. So with the tools and technologies we have available these days, we are also considering to develop a 3D application. So we have our 3D float plans available for the campus and they are publicly accessible. And uh, there are different operations we can perform with the data. We can turn on arboretum data. There is a 3D mesh available for a building. We can turn on that. So we can turn on Catran, route and stop. And if Catrans are running, we can live track them as well. So we can see those dots on the map moving. So they are detecting the live data from those Catrans. So this is also a work in progress. And uh, it's a lot to do. Still, we have a lot to do in this project. But it's coming along. On the 3D map, is, is that tied into the um, CAD data as well, so you can get in and look at rooms? Uh, no, not right now. It's a big undertaking, and we are like considering to do that. So right now, we have only 2D map of our CAD data, not 3D. Got it. So what are, is the whole outcome for the who would be the users of the 3D map application? So it, it will be another aspect of another aspect of seeing uh, a viewing the campus. Like it is used as a planning purpose. Uh, since our department at planning design and construction, we develop buildings. So it, it gives us another good aspect to look how things look like, and we can also add the buildings uh, that are going to be developed in the future, and we can also put a 3D model of the building in this map, and we can see how it will affect the surroundings. So it's another, it's it is another aspect of viewing the data. Wow. For planners, mostly. Is the um, arboretum one of the users of this data for their maintenance? Uh, so there is an uh, application, separate application for Arboretum, and they manage Arboretum data over there. So once the data uh, is updated over there, uh, it is available in our applications. So I, I will rephrase it. So there is a separate department who is uh, up keeping Arboretum data update, and they update the data, and it comes to our system. And we, uh, through Python scripts, we update that information uh, in, web, in web services, and that becomes available in all the web mapping applications that you have shown earlier. So what kind of work do you do um, behind the scenes to make a 3D map, Naveed? So data building, I would say, like building the data is a major task. Uh, GIS analyst in my department, they prepare the data in Arc Pro. And once the data is prepared, then we publish the data on ArcGIS online. And from there, we fetch the data in web mapping application to ArcGIS JavaScript API. So all this data is right now is posted on ArcGIS online. Do you have another um, current project that you might be able to show us that you're working on? Sounding like you're always multitasking and never doing just one project at a time. Uh, yeah, so there is like, uh, I, I already mentioned that we have a public map, new version of public map that is already in, uh, in process, uh, in, in development. And I'm using the latest technologies to develop that public map. Uh, I can show you uh, you arrive, which is DPS application. Uh, so this is a mobile first application since uh, we assume that the most users that are on, on campus, they are exploring uh, parking to their mobile devices. And we divide uh, the data layers in different categories, which is bicycle, transit, parking, and under more, we have zip car location, e-scooters, 
we can turn on specific layers on the map by clicking on them. I, I, if I would say I can, I want to see paid bike parking. We can interact with the features by clicking on them and it shows us more information. There is a legend available. We can share the current view of application with the audience by using this share button. Share link. So if we copy and paste it, if we want to share a current view, for example, this, and we uh, create a share link and copy and paste and send from our community, they will see the exact same view with the same layers turned on the map. And there is a cat ram data available. We can turn on cat rams on the map and it shows cat ram stops and routes and live locations of cat ram shuttles on the map. Is the cat ram now tied to a, a live GPS on the buses? That is right, yeah. That's cool. So you can see. Yeah, so Translock is the company that is uh, managing live tracking of uh, cat trends. And uh, through, a, through their API, we are fetching their data and displaying it on the map, and it is being updated with the uh, current location of cat trends. So, can writers for cat Tran, if you're a student writer, see when your next bus is going to be arriving now through an application? Uh, Not right now, not, no, yeah, not in this application, yeah. Okay. But you can track the buses currently. We can, we can track the buses, yes. Yeah. And we can also uh, predict the next arrival of the bus, but it is, so far it's not available, but this is something that we can consider to add it on the map. Oh, nice. What about showing us a little bit of the room finder application in the, and the work that you did on that. Um, to me, that was a very exciting project to see and helpful for the, well, students, faculty, and staff. Because um, it, it, to me, it seems like you, for the GIS group at Planning Design Construction, you have your internal users, the people that you're helping to facilitate their daily work, but then you also have sort of the, the external, campus community at large, but also visitors. And that one of the, uh, for a new student on campus, one of the biggest geographic problems they first have to solve is, how do I get to my class? Where is my next class? How should I route myself on a huge major campus? And this seems to me like one of those wonderful applications that uh, tries to solve that problem for incoming um, students, but also faculty and staff. Uh, so interactive floor plans is the application that has uh, all the rooms and floors information about uh, the campus on the map. And this application is developed by our IT director, Brennan Brown. Uh, most of the work on the back end, I'm, I'm involving on the back end work, like uh, I, I write the script uh, that fetch the data from CAD drawing and export them in the FileG database and we republish the services that are using both those data and this data is being consumed in, the, in, in this application. And uh, like you mentioned, uh, if students are on the campus and they want to find their room or their classroom, so we also have an aspect of that information available in the public map. So over here, in, so public map is the most widely used application from, uh, from the students and its link is available in Arizona's main website, University of Arizona's website. So over here, you know, students, they can go on buildings and rooms and they can put on the building number or building name like ENR2. And over here, they can type the room number or search the room number. And over here, they can see and the, the room they want to go, it's 
being highlighted. Well, let's see if we can find the where the GIST group meets mm -hmm. up on the fifth floor. Yeah, over here. Great, that's really fun. Oh, that's fantastic. So it, it will find the room for you. Yes, it will find the room for, for us. Oh. And it goes by the layers too. So it, it hits, because it's the CAD files, right? So it hits each individual layer. Yeah, so this is kind of a compact version of interactive floor plans that I have added in this application. It's really exciting to see. What is one, what do you consider right now? I mean, and this is a tough question, but we like to give our guests the tough ones because you're amazing. Um, what is one of your most, you know, fun projects that you've ever done for the university or one that you're like, I don't know how I got that solved, but, you know, um, but something that you look back on and go, this is really cool that I had the chance to work on. So all the projects, uh, I'm doing right now, I, I really enjoy them since I, I love to learn new frameworks and apply the new technologies in the projects. So a recent challenging project for me was editing application for uh, PTS folks. Uh, so they can edit the objects, uh, parking objects on the map and uh, it was like there are so many different layers that we need to manage and there are so many aspects that we need to organize and that that was a big challenge but it was exciting and like i'm feeling very happy that i was able to do it so what we see in the public facing end of the uri application so uh what we see in the public facing end of uri application we can uh, manage it in this application which is which is editing application for pts code so here we can see all those layers we can turn on those layers on the map we can go into the edit mode We can select a feature or we can add a feature from this feature template. This edit panel appears and we can change the attributes or even we can select the feature and we can update its location. And by hitting the save button, it will save the changes. Definitely, I would not want to do this with this current feature and uh, we can perform those editing operations with, with all those layer data sets so there are some other aspects that we can ex ex expect very soon which is like uh event management on the campus and dispatch events so i wanted to point out that some of the projects that you've been showing us and work that's being done by the planning and design construction team um it's nice to see that the enterprise or EGIS team has their own web page. So if people are interested in seeing some of the um, news and events that they have going on, and they're very embedded in the GIS campus community. And I love that I can find actually a picture of the team. With, um, Grant McCormick's um, been doing wonderful work for decades now with the university. It's great to have Grant here. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I would like to mention Grant is the brain behind all those applications. So yeah, he, he's an amazing guy. And uh -huh. Marie and James, I especially, I'm especially thankful to both of these. Uh, they are also graduates from MSJS program and they are very talented guys. Yes, Marie was one of your colleagues in the 2015 cohort, isn't that correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and um, James recently, graduated 2019 so um, another example of where msgist rocks of course um, but how we work together and in terms of networking that you end up you know working with people that you might have been in school with yes yes it's, it's exciting yeah because i believe and marie also had a previous employment in the state so it wasn't like her first position either with your team yeah 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 um 
but you actually had a, a couple of different opportunities when you graduated and um, you chose to stay here in Tucson with the UAGIS um, community and with planning, design and construction in particular. But with your uh, open source and programming skills, you probably could have made a lot more money elsewhere in the US, Naveed. Um, but I'm just maybe just wanted to ask if it's not too personal, like why did you decide to stay with us in, in Tucson with the University of Arizona? Uh, yeah, so when I, it, it was a very tough decision for me that time. Uh, and I was not personally able to make that decision my own. I took advice from the people whom I was close that time. You were one of them. And my, my dad, my family, and they all advised me to stay with the family because this is the main institution that, that get me admitted, that uh, uh, they allow me to get into the United States. And it would, and the projects they were doing in the region. Once I once I talked with the management uh, in BBC, they were excited about that. So all odds were again in, in the favor of uh, my current job. Well, and I just think it's a nice story, and for people to consider as they're moving into their careers, is sometimes what success is not always gauged monetarily. And, and yeah, and sorry to interrupt you, I'm so sorry. So uh, later on, uh, things made my decision, uh, things decided that my decision was right that time because uh, my current job, they are providing me opportunities to go to different uh, conferences and they allow me to attend different trainings and keep my skills updated with the industry. Well, I was thinking that plus it's the communities that you build and the happiness you find is um, is found in different ways. And I, and I really appreciate your ethic and in terms of pursuing both happiness and work, a nice balance. Um, that is right. That is I, I totally agree. Yeah. Tucson is like home for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad to keep you in the... Um, UAGIS community. It's been um, wonderful to keep you around and to, to continue to work with you. And once the pandemic lifts, we'll go back to our regular lunches, Naveed. I miss yeah. having those with you. Yeah, um, I miss those lunches. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to, hopefully, there's a few restaurants that survive that we can try. Um, but thank you for um, joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much.